one and all, to a premium spirits review. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself. And about yeah. to get even more devilishly handsome the more we drink. I don't know about that. No, well, I do. You'll I mean, see. You'll see. I'm just, yeah. Devilishly handsome as they come. Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partners. Thirsty Chicken. Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. Folks, this is one we have been eager for for quite some time. We had to endure a sober February amongst myself and Chicken on the Dog and Chicken podcast show. Like, share, subscribe there as well. But he is here with us here on the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast to do a spirits review of multiple different scotches. Single malt variety. Ooh, now, yes. we're not suicidal. No. We're no. just having small samples. These will not be empty bottles. No, no. Hopefully. But we'll because see how it goes. I have resisted for long enough, gentlemen. Yes. I have been looking in, looking forward to getting into Lagavulin Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This, this is, is one of the better examples from the Isles. This is a 16 year, and this is probably one we should do towards the end, but you have been quite eager to try this. So yeah. let's just dive head first into this pool of yeah. scotch. So you're saying try that at the end? Well, pardon me while I just go yeah, ahead and open this right up, sir. Little splash of water. Margavulin, my cleanest copita nosing glass. Yes. Oh, you're, you're going with the nosing. Yep. I'm sticking. Yeah, with I'm, the whiskey I'm, glass. I'm good. Okay. Uh, that does look good. I am a little... That's plenty. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Phil's trying to get me a little messed up. To, uh, yeah. yeah. There's more. Phil, this is only one. This is the first of we six. We have plenty of you. Ease into it, man. I've been looking forward to this. Half a bottle. Down. Oh, my Lord. 16 year. I promised you we would not finish these bottles off. 16 year single malt oh, scotch man. whiskey. The nose, you do get some smoke and some peat. Oh, wow. Oh, well, that you is. You don't a, even have to get close. This is one of those science experiments where you just do this. Oh, my God. That is hitting me in a really unique way. That's, it's, it's, the smell is one of the most um, intense senses for memory and that is reminding me of something that i cannot put my finger on so, but like like uh, something from my youth uh like a a you, clay or a play-doh or something you were raised out on a farm though so yeah that does ruin my sense of smell in a lot of it categories that's good so you, you well your smell smoky yeah i definitely got the smoky thing yes so i'm not a, a big you know trying to go through that but you definitely do Smell smoke. You smell a little bit of booze in there. Um, I can't smoke, Pete. It's almost like kind of like a fresh cut clover or something. Like there's, a, there like is a, a specific smell a I am getting from that, here. There's some. It'll hit me in a few there. days. It's going to hit me in Dandy several wine. days, and I will comment when I finally remember what it's it like, is that I'm smelling. It's like a lemony dandelion. Like that's a weird. Yeah. That's a weird. Uh, Flavor to think about, but that's that's what I, I know. I have smelled this specific smell before, and I cannot think yeah. of it. Regardless, let's see how it tastes. Wow. Ooh. 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 Ooh okay. It's pretty. Good. Oh wow. <clears throat> wood smoke. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, wood and smoke for sure, but. Very smooth. Oh. I almost would say a like a maple. Bite? What? A maple? A maple. Hmm. That, oh my God, I almost had it. It's like a, okay, do you remember, uh, this is going to sound insane, but when you do like hand painting, when they would just squirt globs of paint on the table and you would just smear it with your hands. Hmm. Not getting that. I, it, I, Sorry, I'm, that's I'm what trying. I'm getting. I, I okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's that. Maybe, I, maybe uh, the magic marker. 
black there's magic something marker. there it's the black magic marker i know what okay. like i know magnums that. yeah the big magnum marker oh yeah. my god that is the nose yeah nailed it that is the nose <laughs> phil didn't sniff markers oh that's why he's the intelligent one out of the group <laughs> like, tony and i are in the corner so who's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Join us next week when we do our review of sniffing Magnum Markers. Oh, be a great episode. Wow, it's no, it's better. No, it's it is. Happen. It's it is. It's typical. better than I expected, but it has that smell, and the smell directly reflects the taste. Mm -hmm. I, it, it, the smell is exactly what I expected. It's not taste. wildly different. Though. No, it, it pairs perfectly, nose to taste. Hmm. But it does have a very sweet initial hit. It, with a the bite has wood, already gone With away. a bitter wood in the back. Yes, uh, very, now, all right, very. Chicken, for these whiskeys, we're going to be grading them on single malt scotch. Okay. We're going to be grading them on scotch, just general scotch, brown spirit, and then top, middle, bottom. We so, got a lot of rating to do here. That we do. This all will right. be a <laughs> oh, wow. video of record. For the Revolution Wrestling Podcast, KOE Nation, and Dog and Chicken Show. All right, absolutely. So, Tony G, as a single malt scotch, woo! Um, I'm going to give this a three. Hmm, okay. It's not bad. Not into the PD, not into the... I'm, I'm not big on peat. I'm not big on that super woodsy flavor, but out of that specific nose and flavoring, that's the best one I've had. It's a good year. It's a obviously it's a good scotch, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it a three, just because it's not my forte. Okay, chicken single uh, malt scotch for a single malt scotch. Um, I actually do like the woodsy flavor to it. At first, when we're talking the marker smell, and and I was thinking industrial smelling mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. that, um, but now like that last that last uh, couple sips of it and after that subsided after i don't know it's gone for me yeah and now like this is this is one where starting out you you might have some complications as as i sipped on it yeah. slowly finished that and then did the last little shoot down there mm. i'm four it's, it's i'm i'm a solid four on that that good. is good it is single good. Ball. and um, it's it's soothing yet you know what you're I'm going to be almost opposite of you, T, because I'm going with chicken. It's a four-star okay. single malt. Uh, but now we move on to scotch in general. Um, if you were going to introduce someone to the idea, uh, concept of scotch, how would you rate this? If I were introducing... Um, no. That's that's complicated. That is. I would not... It, it depends on the person's style, but like yeah. most people that I would introduce it to, I would recommend this um, as, you know, it's it depends on the, the uh, commitment, right? Because this is a little higher end, higher mm -hmm. dollar. This, mm -hmm. isn't as, uh, this isn't your casual scotch drinker no. uh, just getting into this. So maybe... I, as a first time introduction, if somebody's really serious and really loves their scotches and they want to try this or, or get into the realm, I'd say three, seven, five. Uh, you're going to hate me again, but I'm going to stick with three. I would not use this to introduce somebody to scotch because for me, if I'm going to introduce somebody to scotch, I'm going to go with like a Glenn Levitt. It's a, it's a trusted brand. It's a very straightforward scotch type flavor you know what you're gonna get i'm so shocked tony would go to glenn levin <laughs> it, it, yeah. you knew that i was gonna get it's the base it's the base for scotch for me and this is very far away in the spectrum of scotch so. from a glenn levitt so i'm gonna stick with three this is something you would have to ease somebody into on the world of scotch uh, as a scotch i'm gonna have to agree it's a three it's a great scotch, but not one I would introduce someone to the world of single no. malts or scotches in general. That I would generally start with like a Cardew. A Glen or, Levitt. Glen Murray. Or a Cardew. Uh, or a Dalmore, which we'll get to. Later. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, now, we're getting there. As a brown spirit, this is putting it up against all of the whiskeys, <sighs> okay. all of the rums, all the cognacs, armagnacs, all of the varying brown spirits throughout the world. Five-star scale, gentlemen. 
2.75. You can't do anything with this except drink it neat because I have a feeling that would be terrible on the rocks. You can't mix that. And it is a very specific flavor and nose. It's very straightforward. It is what it is. You can't do a lot with it. So I have to be harsher with my, my rating on that. It's uh, good, though. I do like it. I, I agree with a couple things. It's it's going to be hard to mix. It's going to be very specific mm -hmm. on what you're using it for. I could see some cocktails being able to use that smokiness in there to give it a little bit of a fun flavor. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's – it's all scotches have a disadvantage to, to brown spirits just for the mixing and the different things you can do mm -hmm. to – um, I do think it would be impossible to mix it. I, I yeah, don't think I that would be one, but I do disagree with one thing you said, Tony. I think this would be marvelous on the rocks with an ice ball, just one big ice ball. I think this would be... smoky ice balls? You ever done those? That would be perfect no. with this. But yeah, that, it, mm. I think this would be perfect on the rocks, so I'm giving it three stars. That's one we'll have to do a second tasting with oh, the rocks. Oh, that we will do. I, I, but sometimes with the rocks, you it opens it up too much with some rise, and I kind of compare it to that. I think we're uh, on our way to some controversy. Okay. The, uh, Only one shelving. in. Shelving. Shelving. Um, Bottom, middle, top shelf. For me, blended. Blended can be middle or top, but for me, a single malt is pretty much always going to be on the top because it's always going to have an interesting name an interesting flavor and a higher price tag so typically for me you're going to find any kind of single malts on the top shelf regardless um this is your bottle would you put it on your bottom middle or top shelf so if it were me it would go on top shelf but that it's because it is probably one of the best single malts i've I personally like the flavor. I'm a little All biased right. towards it. I like the smokiness of it. So right. it would be on my top shelf. So Lagavulin, 16 year. Uh, I'm also going to put this on top shelf. Uh, just It's a expert whiskey drinker's whiskey. It's not um, not for the faint of heart, as they would say. This is one you're going to graduate to. Yeah, this is not one I would start off with. But no. So, Tony, if you'd be so kind to set this off the side there as a... Uh, Eh, where wherever works. Um, now, gentlemen, we have five to go. I'm partial. I have been uh, I've been waiting for this one specifically. Okay. This is one that we actually had recommended to us while we were in Houston by Sir Stash. Shout out to you. This I asked him after we did our Royal Rumble review what scotch he would prefer, what's his go-to, what's his favorite, and he brought this up, and it just so happened Phil already had this bottle on hand, so I am excited. For you, Sir Stash. To try this one out. If you have a water, you might want to rinse your palate a bit. Tastes like I'm fine. <laughs> it, it helps. It makes a difference. When you do multiple in a row, it... Yep. You, good to have a little water. So. You got to cleanse it just... Kleinish 14, age 14 years. An oak cask. Yeah. Uh, from, I love this. I'm oh, loving it. I'm loving it already. This is a Coastal Highlands single malt. So we just had an Isla single malt. This is a Coastal Highland. So... Glenelish Distillery. I am excited. Okay, that's a lot sweeter. A lot oh, lighter wow. nose. Oh yes, a lot lighter. You get little little buttery oilness. I that's I was gonna say oil, oily. The the nose lingers a touch, and I like it because it's a nice aroma. It's not nearly as overpowering. No, no, like. you you kind of have to get into this one. Bit. So, well, gentlemen, let's see how the Highland. I can tell I'm gonna. Really like this. Mm. Oh, light cinnamon honey. I get the honey. Cinnamon, oh, yeah. the cinnamon. Like just the, 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 the burn on your tongue is more of a cinnamon. The initial than cinnamon kind of turns into a honey, and then as it settles after you swallow, you get a bit of a floral pattern. Yes, yes. It, it wasn't fruity, but it no. was like an interesting. Oh, wow. I, I'm yeah, loving that's good. that. That's good. That's an 
Get a little excellent tart, flavor. A little tart yes, with it too. Yes, wow. but not bad. So a good tart. The burn isn't burn, burn. It's more of a, a it's like oh, tingle. Tingle. It's it is smooth. Very it's like smooth. cinnamon. If you just yeah. had a little bit of cinnamon in your tongue. Mm. Oh, Sir Stash, I commend you. All right. To Sir Stash. That is Indeed. good. So, gentlemen, as you know the score here, mm. as a single malt scotch. Well, Tony, boy. I love that. I really like that. As a single malt, I give that uh, four and a quarter. That was really hard to please. That. Chicken? Um, so I, I did enjoy the last one a little bit more, but that's more by a single sure. person flavor. But if this is really, really good. Um, I want to rate it lower than the last one, but honestly, this is really good. I go four on this as well. This is very smooth, very traditional. Mm -hmm. it's good. As a single malt, I'm going to go four as well. It ranks as good as Lagavulin as a single malt, in my opinion. Yeah, I love um, that. As a scotch. As a scotch, um, I think uh, somebody who was new to scotch wouldn't quite enjoy all the – because I, I feel like the flavor is threefold. So I don't know if they would appreciate it as much. So if you were introducing somebody to scotch with this, it would be a little bit harder. So I will go 3.75. 3.75. I think that's fair. Um, some of the, the aftertaste, cinnamony, it's mm -hmm. almost like a lemon burning, not burning. I don't want to say it's that, but. No, um, no it's yeah, much for, smoother than a burn. If this was the first, first one I ever got or was just introduced, for my first scotch, it's good, but it's not great. Um, I, I go three and a half. Okay. I'm going to agree with chicken here. Three and a half as a scotch, just general scotch. Now, brown spirits. Again, with scotch, it's really hard to, because we typically rate brown spirits um, differently as far as what you can do with them. With all scotches, it's really hard to imagine mixing them with something so that takes it a point down but uh i really like this i'm i'm gonna stick with i'm gonna say three and a half on a brown spirit damn tony's infamously hard to please in brown spirit i really enjoy that uh for a brown spirit uh again as tony stated there's certain expectations come along with it i don't think this meets many of those um and this is going to be always a tough one for me to judge. I'm always going to go negative on this one. I two and a half at best. Okay. I could actually Ouch. see some Scotch cocktails being made with that. Uh, I think with the with the cinnamon flavor, you're right. You could. I'm going to go three seven five. Okay. Spirit. I really okay. like that one as, and I, I could see myself. I fucking, no, no, <laughs> it's all personal. I could thing. see myself <laughs> getting a full size bottle. I, I am absolutely getting a bottle of for scotch. Yes, to drink right. to drink over the rocks yes. or, or yes. I think that would be marvelous a, on the rocks. Top, oh, yeah. middle, yeah. or bottom? That's a top for me, hands down. I am. Yeah, I'll, I would give it the top. I I would put it there. It's good. Yep. Yeah, it's top shelf. It, we're we're gonna be hard. So, gentlemen, we got Craig and Moore, oh, Kaolila, Talisker, or the Dalmore Twelve Year. Which one are you? Which one are you after? Let's Take wait on the doll more. I'm, I I think just based on my expectations, we gotta wait till the end for that. Let's. Uh, we have Talisker tenure. So you like, pick one. It's Cragmore. So we've had the sixteen and the fourteen so far. Let's let's bring it down to the ten. Okay. And see if it can compete with those before. We got we do two have a little palette wear okay. as you guys okay. talk about okay. the Talisker. Single malt scotch whiskey. Oh my. Made by the sea. So this is a coastal malt. And I think those are going to be my, just personally, I think those are, I'm going to like a little bit more. But we shall see. Talisker. See. This is a 10 year. All right. I've had this before. You've so. had this. Okay. Yep. Indeed. We're almost halfway through, fellas, and nobody's falling over yet. So we're, let's we'll get, get through this. Be we'll strong. Get there. We'll get there. We can do this. We can do this. And let's see if Phil gives Tony half a bottle. Of yeah, water. let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. 
Let's not go crazy. Six star whiskey. <laughs> well, that's what, yeah, that's the other thing. I'm like, I want to do the doll more last, but I'm afraid I'm going to be seven stars. Yep. Uh, ooh, like oh, the nose. Oh, wow. It's a very good compromise between the last two we just I, I was just thinking that's a good blend between the two. You get that, you get that smoky hit. But you definitely smell that honey sweetness that the last one had. Yeah, there's some honey, a little bit of peaty. It's it's definitely peaty, which all right. I got no problem with peat. Some folks hate it. Some folks love it. You're not as big a fan. There's one specific scotch that completely turned me off peat, and I think we will have to do that, and that's the frog. We will do that at some point, and hopefully, my second tasting will be. Better now that my taste buds have become more acquired to scotches, but don't hold your breath, folks. But I think this one's going to be good. Petey honey. Let's give it a shot. I, I don't agree. trust the smell. I got to taste this. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Doesn't hit you right away, but that peat aftertaste. Yep. Yeah. But then it immediately subsides and goes away. Like, you think it's going to be an overwhelming yep. minty, like that Macallan. It does have a mint. But it, like you said, it's, like it, it's kind of like a wave. You ride yeah. it. And yeah, it yeah, yeah. Down. It's a minty. Hang on. Mm. Mm. That's an expert to a honey mint. A honey mint, then you get the peat, and then it immediately subsides, and there's yeah. no burn. Like, that's just artful, skillful distilling. That is. There. I, just the kudos. Fact that, like, it just hits you just a little, and then it immediately drops back down. And, you re yeah, you really can't get a better grading than that for a single malt. That, that's, that's a great so, review. <laughs> gentlemen, I like as it. a single malt. Single malt, uh, three and a half. Uh, I, I'd go three and a quarter. I, I it lacks something. It's got a lot going on. It, it is does. good. Um, three and four. You, there's something, I, I know what you mean. You're like, you expect one more I, tidbit I think, in there. And it's, it, yeah. That, I think, is a single malt. So like, like is, is this something I'm going to sit and drink okay. multiple okay. times? Sure, After sure. a glass of this, I, I'll probably switch back to something okay. else. Cause I'm saying three, seven. Maybe, five, maybe it's just because it's a 10 year versus a 14 and a 16. So the, Every year you get a little bit more out of it. So maybe yeah. because it's only a 10 year, it's missing just a little bit extra. It's play. definitely I get what missing you mean. prior okay. than the prior. Uh, I'm giving it 375 as a single malt. I really like this stuff. Um, it's it's nice. Not overbearing. It is nice. No, it's not. It's so it as nice. scotch. Uh, scotch, I will say it. So <sighs> I'm torn between three and three and a quarter. Either way, honestly. I, I go three and a quarter on it. It's it's a good scotch. I do it like is, it. it is. I'll There's go with three and a quarter. With it and you, can't, you can't turn it down. No, no, I would definitely not turn this down. This is very nice. Yeah. For, three. for being 14 and 16 before it, yeah, this is this this holds up. I mix three and a half. As a scotch, I would introduce people to scotch with this one. I think you could. I think you could with this. It Like you said, it might be missing just a little something because it's right. not aged as many. So you but could it's a introduce good something. introductory. Yep. No, I, um, I agree. You're right. As a brown spirit, John. Oh, uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Damn, you're hard to please. A brown spirit for scotch, is, is it, it's, it's got to be There's wrong. a lot you could do with this. There's a lot if you, you wanted to make some spirits. scotch... Uh, cocktails, this one, I'm giving it three. There's a few scotch I, cocktails that this would work with, just with kind of the, yeah. Yes. But, mm, I would two, never, two and a half, I would never cocktail a scotch. It would very, have to be, rare, it would rare, have to be maybe something scotch incredible. scotch just won't ever cocktail you. I don't Maybe you're right. I don't know. Now, all right, all right. I like it. Of the uh, Talisker, very good entry for only a ten. Year. Oh, uh, it is good. also top, middle, bottom. Uh, top. It, it, all, all single malts. Everything on here is going to get a top shelf for me. Spoiler alert. Okay, chicken. Hopefully, I'm I'm surprised. I didn't think it was going to be that good, and I was ready to just throw it in the garbage and call it a. Uh, no, it's a top shelf. It is. It's good. I I, right. I gave it some low scores. But I can't good. disagree with anything either you gentlemen have said. Okay. Top shelf. So, Craig and Moore or Carl Ila? Let's do the, the Space Side or another both, Isla? They're both 12. Let's do the Carl Ila. 
Okay. We'll save the space side for I, last. I think that's going to be. Before we get into. I just have a over. feeling that, that I'm really going to like that. So let's. Carl Eli. I've been curious that. about this one. Did you give yourself a splash of water? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, folks, again, since we are doing all these different scotches. In a row. It is in a row. It is absolutely vital that you give yourself a splash of water in your drink because this it is so, so important. It opens up your scotch so much more than just having it neat. <laughs> Phil, what are you you Another good. half bottle. Yeah, all right. Oh, look at that. That's, that's not even here. Okay, okay, okay. Me, on the other end, I'm having the meat to give me the full palate representation. Water opens the bag because he's Phil he's and he's eccentric. Yeah, Phil's like, I'm better than you, and you know it. Salt well, of the earth. Thank you. Yeah. Salt <laughs> of the earth, uh, folks. Yes, you can tell we've been through it. All right, yeah. Jeff. They don't even know all the other videos we've recorded before. This. All right, Carl Ila. Wait, did, did hit you know it? Yeah. That's interesting. That's Petey. I'd say that's uh, pretty close to uh, the Talisker. See, if you look, like, this flat-out look, you can tell before you even get into them, the Super Petey bottles and flavors are going to have that slightly green hint. That is your way of... Purchasing a bottle that you don't know anything about. If it has that slight brownish green tint, it's going to be peat. You mean slight clove? Am I off on yeah. that? No, no, yeah. It's it's a fresh, not herbal, I but can, yes, a I grassy, can, yes. I could inject a ham with this. You could. Would be the you could. Actually, I don't hate the nose, though. It, Trust it me, is as a peaty. guy that's it's been smooth, using... Though. Like, it's a smooth pee. Yeah. As a guy that has been using wine and whiskey in his cooking, this would be good. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. This is a 12-year. All, right. All right. Kale, Let's hit it, fellas. Kale Isla. 12-year. Okay. I'll take your word for that. I looked it up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, folks. Hmm. Sweet and oily. Very oily. With a little bit of yeah. mint on the back. That's weird. It there is mouth water. It right does. Away. It does make your mouth water. Um, it does have the peat. It does have the wood. It's like olive oil. Yeah. Olive yeah. oil. That feel is yep. like almost pasty. Like, yeah. Like it's not like butter. It's like olive oil. <sighs> that is strange, but I like it. Yeah. It's different. Definitely the smoothest one we've had. <sighs> it is very smooth. For as peaty as it is, I'm surprised it's as smooth as it is. It's that's an interesting. I one. can see why that distillery has stood out over the years. That is interesting. So, gentlemen, okay, as a single malt, I I think that's a little more complex than the other uh, peaty flavors we've tried. I as a single malt, I will give. I'm actually going to give that three and a half. I for a peaty one, that's a that's a high rating for me. Oh, it is PD. I get what you're talking about. However, that is really good. I think it is good. I it think is, it is. It's it complex. Is. It's got a lot going exactly. on. Exactly. And and yeah, the nose has a lot happening mm -hmm. that I can't even interpret it all right. Mm -hmm. I think it makes up for it makes up for a lot with with that is really interesting. This is something I could just set up. I could sip on this all night long. Never think about jumping and grabbing a different one. This is. This is really good. I, I give it four and a quarter. Wow. This I'm up really with good. you. I'm this giving it four favorite. stars as a single malt. Uh, yeah. Wow. Four, now, you're infamously hard to please in every category. So. On brown spirits? Uh, uh, well, we're moving on to scotch. Oh, just just regular, scotch. Okay. Regular old scotch, sir. I, I like the fact that it's got an oily, minty peat to it. That... That oily, minty flavor with the peat makes it much more interesting. I will give this three and a half. Three and a half I is actually a enjoy this a lot for being peaty. Chicken? Uh, I think it's fair. I'd probably lean more towards 375 just because I, I really like this. Like, huh? this is so far of all that we've tried, this has been my favorite. Okay. This is good. As a scotch to introduce people to the idea of scotch, 
four stars. This is yeah. a wow. Very, I, I'm I'm quite. I agree. Impressed. This this would get if this was my first one oh, I ever good. tried. I would never introduce somebody mm. to a scotch because with it's a not Glen Eleven. No, <laughs> this is no because it's pee. Well, and they 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 couldn't go backwards. So is the problem? Okay, if you did introduce this, so I'll defend. Yeah, you. yeah, that's exactly. It's Once like, you've had pee, I would never want a Glen Levitt if I had that available. Wouldn't I? If I Basically, your first introduction to scotch kind of mm -hmm. sets the tone for your entire involvement in scotch. So if you have a heavy peat the first time around, that's going to be your preference if you enjoy it. If you hate it, and then you try, say, a Glen Levitt or Glen Fittage, it's going to be a little different. So uh, for me, I, I would not introduce somebody with this, but it is good. So yeah. top, middle, bottom, it's top. Oh, uh, well, it's it's top. Brown, brown spirits. Oh, I mind oh, brown spirits. Uh, uh, yes, we're all going to agree this is top show. Yeah, let's uh, let's get uh, brown that. spirits. Uh, I actually I'm going to be pretty harsh on this one. You could do some with it, but again, I just can't cocktail scotch. But the oily, minty, peaty. I don't know. You could almost put this with a ginger ale. Honestly, mm. I think you could put this with a ginger ale. So you know what I you know what I'm actually gonna give you this uh, three on the on the brown spruce because you could do this with a ginger ale make it a bit bubbly I think you could do that and it would be good I, I think you could cocktail some of this I'm gonna agree I'm gonna go right on three I'm really harsh on on scotches in general for a brown but I I could see a lot of cocktails with this and the ginger ale thing kind of perked me up I now I think like, that would be good ginger ale? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get some. Working on it. This is gonna be a rough night. Yeah. But, <laughs> See, now, Tony, you're gonna think I'm a madman, but oh god, I'm giving this as a brown spirit three and a half. Really? And the really? reason being, now this this is why you're gonna think I'm a madman. This stuff is good enough to I could actually see myself. I was making cocktails, and I was even missing rum. I could see myself using this in a few cocktails as a replacement. I could see that. It yeah. Really, as a replacement the, the for oily, rum, the oiliness—not all of them. You're not going to make a good daiquiri with this, but no. No. But there's some cocktails that I could see this actually replacing rum. In. If you had no rum, rum. that'd have to be a very specific if you rum. Had no I don't know. Rum. Do you We're remember how weird and oily the Hamptons was? It's thick. It this fit. is not thick. I'm on Phil's side with this one. You it haven't even fit. tried the Hampton. All right, fire so. on you both. Fine. So, uh, I'm I'm really it's, impressed with Kalila. It's it's this is definitely one of the better peaty flavored uh, scotches I've had. I'm actually pretty impressed. Maybe it's just the fact that I've drank so much before it. But uh, Kalila, can you give me the pronunciation one more time? Kalila. Ah, uh, uh, thank you for the home shopping network shop. Yes. Now, before we get into the Dalmore Twelve, Crag and More Twelve. Okay. The Speyside. I don't think this one's going to be as peaty as we're used to. Okay. Because it's a Speyside. Yep. Okay. So this one, 12 year. The color, the color is actually beautiful. Amber honey. You got water? I got it. Okay. Yeah. I, that, see, for me, the coloration of that, that's the perfect color. If you're not going to go super thick, dark, like the Dalmore, that's the coloration I love. So the space side, gentlemen, this is the only space side of this. Uh, Kragamore. It's a very intense, aggressive name. Kragamore. Yeah. Let's just put that like out there. Something that was on Lord of the Rings. Single space side <laughs> mall. Yeah. And then they were overtaken by the Kragamore. It's yes. aggressive. I like it. I feel like there's dragons involved. The nose is subtle. Yeah, very subtle. <clears throat> There's not a lot there. It's very light on it's the It's actually nose. kind of boring. I, I well, agree. You know, when you're comparing it to Lagavulin, yes. But it's a I sweet, agree. Like, it's now, a I know we've come from this. I know the yeah, it's boring. No. This is the lightest Tony, nosing. Chicken, I understand the people from Craig and Moore are going to want to reach through the screen and slap me when I say this, but this is reminiscent of Canadian whiskey. Yeah, I'm getting sweet whiskey. That's the nose. Sweet whiskey. And it's very subtle. And yeah, this is 
Trust me, Craig Moore, that's coming from a place of love. I yeah, yeah no, he, he is a very big connoisseur of Canadian whiskey, so this that that is a compliment, believe it or not. I know you you don't take it. He's comparing way. a 12-year-old scotch to Canadian whiskey. But there is that a is, bit I, of, like, I, I kind of get the hint <laughs> smell that he's thinking yeah, of. But, there's a woodiness on the back of yeah, the nose, but there's that immediate yeah, sweet. It, it is, though. It's nice. You I can, like it. You can smell it. Yeah, you can definitely tell this is Now, Tony, you were going to mill. The back of that nose has some smell that's in my mill that I can't. Is it? I just uh, saw <laughs> There is kind of a, you know, I, I got like a sawdust angle. Is when it, working uh, in my garage, like the, almost like the burnt wood, but then like the dryness with it. With the are you thinking stuff. Milo? No, I've never been around Milo. Oh, try to you remember it yet. Yeah, unfortunately, Tony, you're both right. Yeah. There's a sawdust <laughs> <in> Milo <laughs> smell. But, it, but it's, it's hidden. There's not a lot of nose here. We are digging. We are digging. I'm, that's the back of the front of a Canadian nose. I'm okay. sorry, like I'm, I'm getting it. You know, we're just getting too right, involved in this. I already nose. jumped the gun. Oh, right. this, this is interesting. Mmm, mm. it hits you it like in a good way right away. Oh, the flavor is much more intense than the nose. Oh, yep. that's a little a, spice that's, on the back. That's shocking. Honestly, oh, like, oh. yeah. Honey, uh, oh wow. Oh, hang on, going back in. <laughs> Heading back in for a second take. Sweet spice. Oh, there it is. Holy crap. Yeah, it's sweet and spicy. No, that's like a that, tang. That, tang back, spice, yeah. that back flavor, as soon as it settles, super honey. Wow. With a bit of spice. No. Like a cinnamony spice. I get the cinnamon. Yep. That is honey, folks. Craig and more. 12 years. So. Wait. Sorry, air lighting sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Learning experiences. So, no, as a I... single malt. Wow. That. Interesting one. I right? hate going to the honey, but the honey is so. Because it's not there on the nose. It's not on the nose. It's not on the initial flavor. It's on the aftertaste. And it is subtle. Again, I'm going to count this down. Mm. There. It literally, after you've swallowed it and it settles for a moment, it's like you took a honey bear and gave yourself a squirt in the mouth of honey. And it's sweet. I love it. I after, absolutely love after it. After I swished it on my mouth for like 30 seconds, mm. yes, it's a lot of honey. I a little love bit of that. So, single malt scotch, Tony. Four. Wow. Love that. So, you're going to be getting yourself a bottle <clears> of this. Yeah, something. I'm getting a bottle of that. I love this flavor. It's subtle on the nose. The initial taste is good. And then the aftertaste of overwhelming honey. Absolutely love it that i've or, noticed you really like whiskeys where the nose and the palate are way different i do i do yeah you know to each their own so four stars in a single i like to be surprised chicken i like to be surprised i i agree across the board on most of that uh the the thing that i'm in love with this one it, it's still i don't think it was my favorite one of the night but I'm I'm just in love with it because of that surprise factor. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. I was I was looking to be let down. You smell it, and you're like, kind of smells like somebody like mixed it with water. Like there's not a lot going on here. You hit it. It's smooth. It's very. It's there's a lot going on there. There is. Um, I I agree. I, I'm just gonna go with a four. I, it's not my favorite. It's it's probably right there. It's neck and neck. It's right. favorite of the night. I, I um, am really. I'm gonna be honest with one. you. Uh, I could see why the fact that it having such a Canadian nose could be a slight knock against it okay. as a pure single malt. I'm giving it three seven five. Still, Still pretty high. Fine. Still pretty high. Fine single malt. But I could understand how some purists to Scotch could be a little. I. You know what? So okay on a. Scotch, regular Scotch, Scotch. Ranking, 
I'm actually going to give this a 3.75 because I would use this to introduce somebody to Scott. Oh, how does it measure up against Glenn Levette, Tony? The, oh, this is absolutely smoother than Glenn Levette. Um, <laughs> you were here for the day. You heard it. No, I, like, okay, it <laughs> might not quite hit the – the higher end Glenn Levitt's like the 18, but you could absolutely introduce this to the scotch to somebody because of the overwhelming honey aftertaste that somebody might not, the honey aftertaste is something that you could use to introduce scotch to people because they're, if, if they're just drinking mixes or if they're just drinking beer, a honey aftertaste is a very pleasant surprise or just drinking something neat. Because yeah. that's, a, that's a whole different world of alcohol. Yeah, because, yeah, neat, that's amazingly good. It, it is. Check it's great. Um, oh, man. Oh, what? So, 375? Yep. I, I'm going to take it a little bit further. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely would introduce somebody to this yeah. first. It's, it's not anything crazy. There's a lot going on. And honestly, this can get you into more, like, what we're talking about, the interesting flavors and there's a lot going on and I don't know a lot of people that would not just be impressed with that like um specifically those two I'm getting a mental note sorry I'm folks. buying a bottle of that one that I, you know yeah like, yeah that's good stuff. uh Craig and more 12 is among one of the one of the better 12 years single malts yeah. it's up there with Cardew you remember Cardew right oh Cardew was lovely. Get yourself a bottle of that. Cardew was lovely. That's the primary home distillery of Johnny Walker. So, Cardew so was Craig lovely. More. Um, now, here's an interesting one. Um, now, for Scotch, yeah, 375, Brown Spirits, gentlemen. Uh, brown Spirits, I'll, I will be harsher. It's, uh, it's probably two and a half on Brown Spirits. Um, this is probably one of the ones that I would replace a Brown Spirit with just for – Drinking while I'm fishing or warming up while sitting in a deer stand or something like that. You could like put this that. in a flask. Like, yeah. You could, yes, yes. This is something oh, that would be good for a yes. flask. Yes. Um, for, for a scotch, this will be the only one I probably do a 3 5 for because, like, I, I feel oh, like damn. I could buy this three, little five, guy. Wow. I could take this golfing. I could yes. take it fishing. I could take it hunting. It's I'd diverse in its use. Now, this one, no. Not for what you would use it for, no, but where you I would, would use it. No, I would not replace rum with any kind no. of this. No. Uh, but in terms of brown spirits, like you said, this is like the perfect flask whiskey. Yes. Um, so, I'm going to three as brown spirit. Fair. Let's be frank. Is there anybody that's saying it's anywhere other than top? Top, top, oh, top. Totally no, top. gentlemen, this one uh, Tony's been looking forward to for a while. Yes. Okay. We are. We are here. The Dalmore Twelve. Tony, okay. would you be so kind as to uh, read yes. a little bit as to how the Dalmore Twelve is made? Okay, I've got an entire box here, folks. Here, <clears throat> under the watchful eye of our master distiller, the liquid is initially matured. An American white oaks ex bourbon casks. This gives its first base of soft vanilla notes. The liquid is then separated into two parts for its final flourish. The first part remains in the American white oak ex bourbon casks, with the second transferred to the finest 30 year old Matsu Salem Alsoro sherry casks, exclusively provided by the renowned Bodega Gonzalez Bias. The personally crafted sherry casks give the whiskey its rich, nutty character. The two parts are then reunited so that the influence of the different casks harmonize to create something absolutely magical. And I threw in the absolutely. So this has got high expectations all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, this is... The bottle alone, if I may. Ooh. The bottle alone. Gives you a pretty high expectation. The coloration of this is gorgeous. Wow. It's brown, like it's it red, nice. it's clear, but it's thick. Oh, and I love the bottle itself. The shape, the decal, everything about this is beautiful. I must say also, this is my younger brother's favorite whiskey in the world. Of any whiskey, this is his favorite. That's pretty good because actually I went into the kitchen 
He likes earlier, it as good as Crown Royal. I went into the kitchen to get us uh, water earlier, and I noticed that there's an empty bottle of this sitting there drying. My, so my Phil's brother, had a bit of an intro to this. My brother and I, uh, we, we, we like this stuff. Right? All right. I'll just leave it at that. But um, How does it hit the nose? I yep. love the Chicken's color. impressed with the nose. I extremely. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It's, oh. it's so complicated. Hang on. Because it's a mixture of sherry and American Seven. bourbon. Yes. I get, I get that. I'm, I smell it, and I'm like, oh. Let me get all up is, in there. Right, <laughs> right away, you're like, oh, this is kind of a. You like is, that tea? Yeah, yeah, I do. Right away, smelling it, you're like, yeah, this is this is a good bourbon and, and a good whiskey. Also, so you guys know, the Delmore is one of the highest end uh, distilleries in all the world. They put out bottles that are worth five, seven, ten thousand dollars. And so most this, of them look exactly like this. Yep. And so this was just some stuff that they thought, let's put it in some different casks. It's maybe not quite good enough to be the six thousand dollar bottle, but. Exclusive 30-year-old casks to yep. age. That's, so, that's impressive. The Dalmore is... And the 12 the, is actually the lower end. That is the lowest end you can possibly this get on is this low. from the Dalmore. So, color alone, beautiful. Oh, Bottle, yeah. Bottles gorgeous. Yeah, a maple uh, yes, amber. Yes. Oh, yeah. It looks like syrup. That's the sherry. That's the sherry. Just oh, God. All right. Let's the nose this. is amazing. Uh, well, what... What smells you getting? The nose is amazing. Like the sherry is I, almost I, an orchard fruit oh raisin. God. I get a hint of the that sherry. Sounds so corny, but you're right. <laughs> no, like, you absolutely you smell. You smell the the sherry cask. You smell that you on the back end. But what I'm loving, like it's it's got a very for me, it smells very boozy. But in a super good way. So this is forty three percent. This is something I smell and say, "This is gonna not be a, a very good night." Usually um, for my wife. <laughs> um, this is good. Usually you get in there and you smell that boozy nose and you're like, "Ooh!" But this this is dangerous. Boozy in a great There's only great a way. Slight bit of wood in the nose, but not much. Yeah, it's right. just subtle, it's subtle, subtle, subtle nose. Yes, let's drink. Oh, and Phil's even drinking with a dollar more. Mm. 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 Wow. Finish with a floral fruit mm. on the. Oh! <sighs> yes, as uh, Tony mentioned. Oh, wow. The Dalmore glass. It's slow. Came it's with steady. this. Oh, that's got a so it, very it, slow. Yeah. And it's like, a, I got a, like a caramel feeling right now. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's, as a lover of cognac, this yes. spreads across your palate oh, like a single drop of cognac. Damn it. Because that's the great thing about cognac. You put one little drop on your palate, spreads across your entire mouth. Glad we waited till the end for this. This does the same. So oh. this one's going to be... <sighs> Tony, hmm. what do you give this as a single malt? You get, like he said, the caramel, but initially you get, I feel, I get a vanilla. Yeah. And then the caramel so it looks sets like a in. caramel apple. Caramel yes. apple. Am I off on that? No, no, like, that's caramel apple on the nose. Wow, I, I know that's the one time my American has showed through. Sorry, folks in Scotland. Caramel apple. <laughs> I know we've done what? Five, five other ones. Okay, so we've done five others before this, and I was afraid of this, but uh, that's don't be fucking judge it honestly. Incredible. I think if we would have done this first, it would have it would have get the same marks. This yep. is fantastic so as a single malt that's a that's a four four and a quarter it's hard to disagree with that i'm i'm gonna go with four um oh, it's really it's really damn good um mm. I, i'm interested on the rocks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, this one's good and just I, I i'm interested what it's like without a dash of water honestly I think the water doled some of it out. Well, Maybe I'd give it a higher rating if it was. The water so. opens it up a little bit, so I don't know if it does. I think it takes well, away from it. Just smell it without the. Yeah, see, I, I think it takes away. Yeah, it, it's, it's quite interesting richer. without the. Well, all right. <laughs> well, okay. Hey, this is for science, folks. Yep, let's go with science. Yes, we're fucking doing this. <laughs> Do it. Come on. All right. Welcome back to Nebraska, son. Yeah. 
So you could join us. Yeah. Well, uh, it's the last one of the night. So. All right. Yeah. We'll record that, that, sir. Yes. Ooh. So, all right. Oh, yep. Without the water, I'm getting honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honey on the back end, but it's without it's, the water, I'm getting honey. It's good oh, either better. way. It's better without water. Yeah, yeah, this one you just drink straight. So I don't know about right. better. So I don't right, know about malt, better, but you it gave is it uh, four. You gave it. Uh, now that I tried it without water, way better. I, I think four, four and a quarter. Like that's good. I'm going four seven five as a single malt scotch. It's almost. Mm. Almost like if it wasn't for the fact that it was Olosoro sherry and American good. bourbon aged, it would be a five. Oh, like you're just marking out for all the fucking casting. Oh no, I'm saying it would be five star if it was pure single malt Irish. Well, they've got plenty of their options. Oh, we're getting there. All right, now to Scotch, just regular old Scotch. Tony G. The sweetness is good. The, the nose is amazing. The taste is good. The aftertaste is excellent. Uh, scotch. Four and a quarter. Uh, four and Love a half. it. Four and a half. This is, this is my new... And this is the low end. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, oh, yeah. It only goes up from here. It just gets better. I, yep. So maybe I should hold myself back to a four. That's, four, that's my thinking. Exactly. But oh. that is fantastic. Straight. No water. No ice. Just yep. oh, this guy, beautiful. They that's, have a, a, that's beautiful. They have a cigar malt that on top of all that. Oh. They also age it in a wine Cabernet Sauvignon You're going to make me cry. Sauvignon cry. All right. In terms of scotch, just scotch, I'm giving it five stars. I know you can disagree. I don't care. It is five. A, so there's nothing better. Oh, there's others that are as good. <laughs> but but I'm better. saying in terms of introducing somebody to the world of scotch. Oh, yeah. This would be. Introduction. Can you think of a better one as an introductory? Obviously, if you introduce somebody on a really expensive bottle, that's great. But if you. Uh, five. For, for introductory. <laughs> yeah. Hard to disagree. Yeah. I, right. I, Four and a half. Four and a half. I think, right. I think that is close Browns. to the best thing you could have to start with. Thank you, sir. That's an excellent introduction, yes. Brown spirits. Four. I yep. think my last one was going to be the highest. Mm -hmm. um, I could use this in a lot of things. I could do a lot with this. Four. All right. It's a brown spirit, four and a quarter. And it's the low end. I know. It only gets better from here. Okay. So is there any dispute what shelf this sits on? Uh, on oh, top I'm of the Totally top on the bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can reach it easier? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I don't want anybody else to see I have <laughs> any. It's mine. No, no. This goes in a decanter that you hide behind other shit that you don't yes, share with people. Yes, yes, you good. hide this behind other low end liquors that nobody's mm -hmm. ever going to touch. So as no, this is... This is decanter worthy, and for me, that uh, says something. That yeah. that is something, especially with a darker. Yep. Uh, mo most of the time, you don't find that dark of a scotch that you like this much. This is. I. I don't and this know. isn't just the fact that we've gone through all these different scotches. I have had this scotch before tonight, and my marks would be the exact same. I'm sorry. This is like yeah. I said. This is my younger brother's favorite whiskey in the world. I get it. Um, yeah, that's excellent. How much a bottle? Uh, this cost me 56 plus tax. I will be getting it. a bottle of this. I have seen them for more expensive in other places. No, no, this is under $60 a bottle. Or even at 60 That's yeah. Yes. Yeah. fantastic. If you want to try scotch, this is a good introduction. And for the price, if you were let down by, say, a blended, like, yes, Davis, yes, or, or some of the others, if you really <sighs> yes, want to try yes. a scotch, that, that's where you go. Mm. Yep. So, out of all the single malts in our tour tonight, I think we have come to the conclusion that that's our winner. That's yeah. the winner. All right. Uh, bring them back. Yeah. Bring them back in. They all did well tonight. Uh, yes. <laughs> Bringing them back, folks. We've had a few drinks. 
We've had a. It's all good. We'll we've had a this. lot of drinks. We've had a couple. Let's had, put the Dalmore right there in the center. We've had one to six. Holy crap! But hey, guys, we made it through it, and we're alive. We yeah for now. So oh. this has been our tour of the island of Scotland via distillery. So as I'm known to say around here, folks. All that being said, I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, the Muhammad Ali of alcohol podcasting, signing off and handing it off to my indomitably inebriated partners in broadcasting. You're oh my, uh, yeah, different partnership for me. No, no, I like your muscly arms. Oh no, so folks. This has been the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast, the Dog and Chicken Show, all of the great places where you can get your varying KOE Nation content. Signing off and hanging off to my indomitable broadcast partners. Guess what? Chicken butt. Like, share, subscribe. Love you, bye. <laughs> Follow that up, bitch. Yeah, I can't. I'm Tony fucking G, and this was, this was lovely. Lovely. Absolutely. We're just getting started, fellas. Yeah, we got more shit to do. Woo!